Welcome to the Steps of Baking series. This is a 13 part video series in which we take a closer look at each individual step of the baking process. Every bread you bake will require you to take most if not all of these steps. While sometimes overlooked and not given a second thought, each of them is just as important as the next. And today we will talk about bulk fermentation. Now as soon as you stop mixing your dough, fermentation starts. There are a number of different ways of initiating fermentation, be it by using a leaven elaborated from sourdough starter, or a yeast generated pre-ferment like Polish or Biga, or just the addition of commercial baker's yeast. Most of the flavor in your bread will develop during the bulk fermentation stage, and that is why it's important not to rush it. While the dough is fermenting slowly, organic acids are developed inside. They contribute to flavor and texture and the development of the dough. Organic acids also improve the keeping quality of the dough. This will help it not go stale as quickly. That is why naturally leavened breads, which are fermented very slowly, can easily be kept for more than a week without going off. Now it's understandable to proof a sourdough bread for a long time because it takes a long time. But when we are talking about yeasted dough, the fermentation is quite rapid. So while the rapid fermentation of yeasted dough will give you lots of volume and lots of gas inside it, it will impact the flavor. That is where pre-ferments come in. If you are making pre-ferment like Polish or Biga, let's say for a ciabatta or focaccia, or even a flying sponge for some cinnamon rolls, the process of pre-fermenting a portion of the total flour for a number of hours will give you great improvement in flavor. So let's talk a little bit about dough temperature. As a general rule for wheat based breads, you want your dough to be around 23 to 26 degrees Celsius after mixing. And for rye bread, you want that to be a couple degrees higher. But then again, proofing time will vary because of the conditions in your kitchen. In the winter, when it's cold, it will take longer. In the summer, when it's hot, it will take a lot less time. So you need to keep that in mind. So if it's a cold winter's day, you want the temperature to be higher. And of course, if it's the middle of the summer, you want to lower your dough temperature. And you can easily control this by controlling the water temperature, or even controlling the temperature of the flour. You may refrigerate it. Now, maximum yeast activity occurs around 27 degrees Celsius. While you will get a good rise out of your bread, flavor will suffer because it will take less time. So there's always a balancing act between flavor development and dough volume development. But just remember that these are general guidelines, not rules. I mean, you're baking at home. If you want your bread to be ready in a couple of hours, then make your dough warmer. It's totally understandable that not everyone has the time to let their bread ferment slowly. And sometimes I'm guilty of that too. I really crave some rolls or something. So just knock the dough together 27 degrees C and they're done in two hours. I wouldn't suggest doing it every time, but in a pinch, it works. Now there's another step that may be taken during the bulk fermentation stage, folding. I will talk more about that in the next episode. Most of the doughs in this video are being folded. That is why you see the short proofing times. Folds are normally performed at intervals during the bulk fermentation stage. But the main points to take away from this episode the fact that your dough should be between 23 degrees C and 26 degrees C for optimal fermentation. You want your dough to expand, but at the same time, you want to develop flavor. For most breads, this step will be the one where it develops most of its flavor, as I said. Unless we are talking about retarding or cold proofing, which is basically the act of shaping your dough then placing it in the fridge for its final proof. Cold proofing gives the dough characteristic sour flavor, but we'll talk more about that in another video. But as always, if you have any questions or suggestions, write them down in comments. If you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. I publish my videos twice a week. On Wednesday, you get a recipe, and on a Sunday morning, you'll get some bread baking principles like this video. So if you want to learn more about baking, check them out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.